Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm here today to speak about uh, this project that we made in Bahamas. As you can see, here's Florida, and on the side you see the Bahamas. Closer view of the island. This is the new Providence Island. And the Crystal Palace Hotel. On the left, you can see the Melia Hotel. On the right, you have uh, Grand Hyatt and also SLS. All of them, five stars hotel. Melia is staying like 30 meters away, and SLS around 60 meters away from the building. So these are the three towers that we imploded. The Tower M, Tower H, and Tower C. Uh, tower M and H with 12 floors, and Tower C with 16 floors. The rest of the area we demolished mechanically. So we decided to create this team. So we have this Bahamian company, Lenovo, who invited us to create this team. So they were the general contractor. They, had, they were responsible for project management, interface and coordinate with government of Bahamas and also local work workforce with 130 direct and 80 indirect employees. We had ASI and they were responsible for structural engineers and 3D modeling and simulation of implosion. And also Fabio Bruno USA. We were the demolition contractor, were essential consultant to ASI for implosion planning, project management, and project engineers. We had to bring them as well. Have equipments with operators and mechanical. We brought all of them from Brazil, and also a foreman. These are the equipments that we used um, in the whole project. But basically, we brought from Brazil the, 40 ton, the two. 40 ton excavator with hammer, three 40 ton excavator with concrete crusher, two excavators with bucket, and two mobile crushers. The rest we found on the island, and, or we brought some of them from the United States. Uh, we didn't consider that in our, uh, in our job. So as basis abutment, if discovered, import duties, bad tax, unforeseen delays created by government requirements, hauling of crushed gravel off of site, material to remain on property. So basically we began our conversation, they wanted to finish everything by Christmas. So considering that it would take us four months to finish, uh, to recycle everything and demolish the rest of the structure, we had to implode by August 15. Plus we need two months for soft stripping and also the preparation for the implosion. So we needed to begin everything by mid-June at the most. But actually, we began on July 16th. So we're already one month behind the schedule. So every week, we're, we're giving to the client a report. So showing photographs, showing physical progress, showing exactly what was going on with our job. So basically on week three, until week three, we made like the daily safety meeting, which was really important because most of these people never worked with demolition before. So we had to teach them how to work properly. So it was really hard with all of us. You know, we had to go like talk to it from uh, uh, every kind of people day by day, you know, to show them if they were doing something wrong. So it was really hard. And, but at, at the end it was good because uh, we, we passed through all of these without one single accident. So there's a view from Tower M with drywall and furniture is removed. So highlights from week one to three. We had the daily safety meeting. Our team arrived on July 9. Uh, mobilization of ex exclusive team for the installation of safety elements. Elaboration of the plans of cuts and plans of detonation of the three towers. We started the cleaning of Tower C on week two and we estimated the end of job on January 12th because, of course, we postponed one month. We postponed one month at the end of the job. So this overall physical progress, considering that we finished on week 28, on January 12th, we considered also a weather event because it was a hurricane season, so we had to consider one week that we could not work. The implosion now was going to happen on September 16th, and the equipment should arrive on August 27th. Basically, we are on time. So, as you can see, we're 7% achieved, and we plan it to be on 6.3%. Uh, we also made this program floor by floor. So we gave numbers to everything. 
So if you need to do soft stripping, if you need to do uh, some cutting concrete, if you need to do some uh, 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 um, holes, protection against flying debris, charging of explosives. So we gave numbers to each floor so we could follow up and see if we are inside the schedule. So on Tower H, we are 4% ahead, Tower M 7.8, and Tower C 0.31%. Week four, there's some cleaning on sixth floor of Tower M and 10th floor of Tower H. Sixth floor of Tower C, and this is the casino mezzanine view. We demolish the casino afterwards, after the implosion. This is a view of Tower M. Now some answering that we remove close to the elevator, elevator. This is the mini excavator work on the ground floor of Tower C. So that one is one equipment that we, we had on the island already. So highlights week four. We updated the simulation with ASI because since you got in the job, we start breaking the structure, you, you can see, you can feel the structure much better. So we made a few changes on the cutting plan with ASI. And also the equipment arrived in Panama. So they left Brazil, they left Rio de Janeiro, and right now they're in Panama. Total trucks removed from soft strip 373. Right now, we're still on schedule, 11%, and we plan to be at 10%. So 1.93% ahead on Tower H, 9% ahead on Tower M, and 0.003% behind schedule on Tower C. Week five, daily safety meeting. Again, so that's something really important for the job. On the side, you see a picture of uh, uh, behind this, this wall there was the energy room. So the energy of the hotels around the area was provided by this room. So we could not break this wall at all. And that, that wall was inside Tower M. So we had to leave some work behind until they uh, substitute the energy room to another place uh, across the street. So we made some cut lines on green color and the holes on red color. That's some windows that we open uh, for the pre-weakening pre of the structure on the floor, on ground floor of Tower H and second floor of Tower M. And the equipments for cutting uh, uh, concrete arrive on the site. We bought them from the United States. Tower M second floor, Tower H front view. As you can see, there's a lot of trash on the ground, so all of this trash we removed from the soft strip. Second floor of Tower C, another view. Highlights week five. We finished the manual cleaning on Tower M. Windows opening on concrete walls for structure weakening on the ground floor of Tower H and on the second floor of Tower M. The equipment and saws for concrete cuts arrive on the site and will be tested, tested next week because we need some training before. Total trucks will move 446. So right now, we are behind the schedule because we're planning to start the cutting and we didn't. So we are 16% and we should be 18%. So on Tower H, we're, we are 5% behind the schedule. On Tower H and Tower M, 8% behind. And Tower C, 4% behind. Again, week six, another daily safety meeting. Training of concrete cuts that we had. We had to bring some people to train these guys. And then the first cut, cuts made by the team. So uh, Tower H right now, all floors are clean, but you can see there's still a lot of material on the ground that we had to remove before the implosion. Highlights, we finished the manual cleaning on Tower floor, beginning of the cuts on the concrete walls on Tower M. The PPL company, that was the energy company, finally, uh, turn off the electricity supply and arrival of steel and bits from, for drilling from Fabio Bruno. So we brought some steel and bits from Brazil because it was much faster to bring from Brazil than from the United States, believe it or not. Uh, total trucks removed 615. Again, we are still now way behind the schedule because we are 19% and we should be 26%. So. Why is that? Because we didn't start drilling at this week. We were planning to start drilling and we didn't. So we were 17% behind the schedule on Tower H, 
21% behind schedule on tower M, and 15% behind schedule on tower C. So we made this test with four different teams to see uh, exactly how our team is working with the, the concrete cuts. So we considered this average of 7.5 meters per hour per equipment because we had more than 2,000 meters of cuts to do over the building because this building, they were very strong. They were a lot of concrete because they need to, to be staying there if a hurricane passed by. So it was really tough. So we need to make sure that with this production we could fit into our schedule. And everything was okay considering that production. And then finally we started to drilling some holes in Tower M, as you can see. And also some cuts in Tower M and some weakening in Tower M as well. Highlights week seven. We started the holes in Tower M. The service of cutting concrete was practically finalized in Tower M. Our operators and mechanical arrived on the island. Total trucks removed 748. So we are now 25% overall and we should be 40%. Our equipment didn't arrive on time. So now we knew that we had to postpone the implosion already. So we were 34% behind the schedule in Tower H, 9% in Tower M, 31% in Tower C. So we used our, operator, our operators because they had experience in implosion before with us, so they knew how to wrap the columns, so we used them you know, to advance uh, the work uh, because they were doing nothing. The equipment were not there, so we used them to wrap in the columns. Week 8. We were 29% and we should be 47, way behind schedule. So Tower H, 8% behind, Tower M, 3.7% behind, and Tower C, 39% behind. And you can see some columns that were wrapped on week 9, on 2nd floor Tower M, 10th floor Tower C. And finally, our equipment arrive on the island, but they stay on the port for 4 or 5 days, something like that. So we still we're still not able to use them. So three towers are practically, practically clean. The equipment has arrived, but we're not able to use. We start drilling, wrapping columns with steel fence and geotextile black in tower C. So we, we make this resume of activities. The cleaning are practically done. Concrete cuts, we haven't started on tower C. Drilling, still a lot to do on tower C. Columns wrapped and explosive loaded. Of course, the explosive would be the last one that we are gonna place it. Overall, week nine, we are 32% and we should be 47%. Tower H, 3% behind. Tower M, 2% behind. Tower C, 17% behind. We made this platform so we can make the, the cut, cutting on the concrete walls on the elevator shaft because after the simulation we noticed that this shaft, if we do not make the cuts, it will not break it. So we need to do these cuts inside the elevator. So, and also a picture of concrete cut on the 12th floor of Tower C. Again, some protection on the ground floor of Tower C. And finally, the equipment is working on the side, making the separation between Tower H and M. So we need them to do that before we start wrapping the buildings. Again, another picture of them working on the side. Some protective screen that we use on 7th floor of Tower H and M, of course on Tower C as well. We use the protection as a plus because we make protection on the pillars and also we make protection on the building. So just to make sure that no flying debris will be around the area because we had three five, five star hotels and nothing could go wrong on this time. We received a permit for demolition on September 14th. So it took a while, but that's when we receive a permit for that. Uh, we also use a screen, a weather station, to control the wind, because we didn't want the wind at the day of the implosion to be blowing to the hotels or to the ocean. It had to be blowing to the island. So we, we made a study and we considered, we, we noticed that 85% of the time, the wind was blowing this direction. So we just need to check on the day of the implosion if the wind was blowing the right direction so we could press the button. So week 10, 
All three towers are practically clean, clean drill and cut. You use the, separate, uh, the equipment to make the separation on the buildings. And also we start using the protective net uh, on the buildings. So basically the floor cleanings are done, concrete cuts almost done except on tower C, drilling except on tower C, we still have some drilling to do. Columns wrap are okay except on tower C. So tower C, our main goal right now. So as I said, implosion didn't happen on the day that we planned it before because the equipment took a, a long time to arrive. So we were now 38% and we should be 63%. 19% behind the schedule on Tower 8, 14% Tower M, and 22% on Tower C. So another picture of Tower C with the protection of the pillars, and also the ground floor. And uh, Tower M, the energy room. So after we remove all the equipment from the energy room, we still have to make some holes and protection on the pillars over there. It's a view of Tower H with a protective net. And the dust suppressors arrive on the island. And we're also placing them in strate strategic spots. The protection that we made in Melia. And again, we still had a little thing to do in Tower C to finish everything and start loading explosives. So right now we're 41%, we should be 65%. We were 17% behind the schedule, 14% behind the schedule on Tower M, and 14% on Tower C. Basically, the reason for that is the explosives itself. So week 12, everything's 100%, we charged everything, so we're ready for the implosion. We were 47%, when we should be 67% by now. Everything, 100%. Let's talk now about the implosion itself. So on Tower M, use explosives explosives on the ground floor, second floor, and seventh floor. And we made some cuts on the concrete walls on these other floors right here. So where we use explosives, we made two cut lines instead of one. It's a view of the ground floor of Tower M. You can see three cores over there. That's the second floor. You can also see some concrete walls as well. And there's the typical floor. Tower H are very similar to Tower M, but the ground floor was a little short. So we decided to use an extra floor, explosive on an extra floor. So we use explosives on the ground, second, third, and seventh. And again, the only difference between this tower and the other tower is that we made two cut lines on the third floor. It's a tower C. We use explosives on the ground, second, sixth, and tenth floor. Same thing, chuka lines on the floor that we use explosives. These are the ground floor of tower C, three cores, a lot of concrete walls as well, on the typical floor. We also made the wind analysis because it was a hurricane season, so we consider, together with ASI, that a hurricane class five would pass by. So what could happen with the building with all this weakening that we are doing on the building? So we noticed that on the concrete walls and some concrete walls at the edge, we we're leaving 0.6 meters to use explosives. But if we left like that and a hurricane passed by, it could collapse. So we had to move from 0.6 to one meter. Just 40 centimeters was enough to hold the structure over there, even if a hurricane class five would pass by. So we made this change before we start the cutting. And this is the simulation. Oh. Can you start the video, please? No, no, no. The video for the presentation. This one. Now I'll go back. You can't start the video.
Oh yeah, it started. See the simulation of Tower C? We had 90 seconds of difference between the first implosion, so the Tower C, then the Tower H and M. You see that both are going down at the same time. But you actually we decided to implode the first Tower H and then on the sequence <coughs> Tower M to avoid the air blast, of course. These 90 seconds was important just to uh, 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 to uh, hold the dust a little bit. So the Tower C would implode, these two towers would hold the dust, and this dust would not go into SLS or Grand Hyatt. So that's why we, we, got, we made this difference between one implosion and the second one. So dust analysis. A, that was the initial cloud of all the three buildings. If the wind was blowing this direction, this would go, uh, all the dust would go to Grand Hyatt or SLS. This side would go to Melilla. <coughs> this side would go to the ocean. We didn't want that as well. And then, that's the, the wind that we want. So we wanted to make sure before the implosion the wind was blowing into the right direction. So we use the suppressor two hours ahead in this direction. 15 minutes ahead, we change it for this direction. This is the view, week 13, right before the implosion. So we blowed on October 1st on Monday because there was less people on the hotels, so it would be better for the implosion. That's another view. You can see the dust suppressor is blowing before the implosion. And that's the video. Can you please start the video for me? One. You see Tower C coming down first. That's a good comment. Didn't feel a thing. So it's good. The vibration was not was not high at the, at the moment they were taking the, 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 this video. Please start initiate this one too. Ninety seconds later, tower H first, and on the sequence tower M. It's a view from the ocean. Please start. You see on the left the SLS hotel. And on the right there's Melilla, which is really close to Tower C. You see the protection that the, the, the Tower H made, you know, the dust will not go directly to uh, SLS. So that's the view now, please, for Tower H and M. So that's the view before the implosion, after the implosion. View from the deck, before and after. This is the simulation of Tower C at 2.7 seconds and 3.7 seconds. View from the back, Tower C, 1.7, 2.7, and 3.7. Tower H at 3.5 seconds and 5 seconds. So as you can see, it went really close to what we planned. And then we immediately start using our equipment to demolish the rest of the structure and also prepare uh, this, the, to recycle all this material that we imploded. So highlights week 13. The implosion happened October 1st. It was a great success. Immediately after the implosion, the team made a careful inspection of the structures and liberated the area. We removed the blanket from Melia and SLS. And also the equipment started to working over there. And we had this meeting between Lenovo and Fabio Bruno to split the site into zones so you can define the attack plan of activities after the implosion. So we made basically the same thing. We gave numbers to the activities. So, attack zone, rainforest, uh, number two, casino, 
salu between H and M, tower C, tower H, tower M, zone 7, low tower, and ramp. So we also gave numbers to them so we could follow up the physical progress. So week 13, we're 59%, we should be 70. Week 14, we're 64, we should be 73. It's a view of, of week 16. Week 16, 72, when we should be 76. It's a view from week 17, 17. There's a lot of, of recycled material already over there. Now, week 17. Now we notice that we could finish way before schedule. So we could see, continuing the line that would finish by week 23. Week 18, another picture. Week 18, you can see the recycle, uh, mobile crusher recycling the material over there in the middle. So week 18, we were 86%, we should be 83. A view from week 19, a lot of material being recycled. Week 19, 91%, we should be 87. Week 20, everything is almost done. 95%, we should be 90. Week 21, almost everything done. 98%. So on December 4th, week 22, six weeks before schedule, we got 100% in everything. And that's the final picture when we recycle all this material and everything was clean. So thank you so much. If you guys have any questions. So we got, uh, we got time for one question. If somebody in the audience, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, actually I didn't. Um, there's not a lot of traffic on the area right now, over there. It's a tourist area, so basically we had like 20 trucks, you know, going 20 to 30 trucks. John, it was 20 to 30 trucks every day, right? And we are going back and forth, removing the, the soft street, right? Yeah, so basically, and we didn't have any problem with any kind of delay. Got one time for one more. I saw another hand up a second ago somewhere. This one over there. Oh, in the back, all the way in the back. Bill Moore. Just another day at the beach, then, is what you were saying the project was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good place to work. Uh, I'm curious why you wouldn't want the dust to go out over the ocean. Seems like that would be the ideal spot for it. Yeah, the government, they said they just did a one. I mean, we're showing them that would be like only eight kilograms of dust. Eight. That's it. Uh, that's our calculation together with ASI. And, but they said, no, we don't want that. The, the, the ocean is our main thing, you know, so we don't want everybody you know, taking pictures of the dust going to the water because, I mean, that's the tourists, they come here because of this ocean, so we don't want any dust on the ocean, so that was the only reason for that. Yes, sir. One more question. So, all the other materials, except for the, the concrete, which was left on the site, where were they shipped to? Yeah, they had a place for, uh, that's called trash. Okay. Uh, inside the island where they receive all the trash from the island, so we had to... So it was uh, dumped on the island itself? Inside the, the island, yeah. Okay. And the steel, uh, we also, uh, uh, that was for free. You know, someone took the steel for free and afterwards got this material and yeah. okay. took someone else because it was not worth it for us to bring to the States or anywhere else. Okay, thank you. So we're running a little behind on time, so Fabio, great job. Thank you very much. Thank you.